If you enjoy the stories and want to hear more, then please consider subscribing. Most of you listening aren't subscribed, so please take this time to subscribe. Turn on notifications so you'll never miss a story and be the first to hear. You'll also be supporting me. Thank you. It's already 9 in the morning, and Mrs. Mitchell hasn't had breakfast yet. She sat quietly in her room and waited for her daughter-in-law to leave the kitchen, but she was in no hurry to leave. The daughter-in-law had already eaten nine pancakes and drunk two cups of coffee, and now she was watching with interest the continuation of her favorite series on TV. Of course, she could watch this series in her room as well. There is a bigger TV and a more comfortable sofa, but she preferred to do it in the kitchen, because here you could eat something at any time. And Mrs. Mitchell at that time dreamed of how she would make herself an omelet and coffee with milk. She understood that the kitchen was small and cramped for two. Mrs. Mitchell thought, what should I do? I want to eat, but I'm afraid to go to the kitchen. The daughter-in-law will immediately begin to swear. She will say that I, as always, came at the wrong time. Then she will complain that I dirty the stove and my food smells very bad. Mrs. Mitchell recalled how a week ago she had overheard her daughter-in-law talking to her girlfriends. The daughter-in-law complained to her closest girlfriends. Most of all, I am outraged that the three years ago she inherited a room in a huge communal apartment in the city center. There must be 20 rooms, maybe more. And instead of going to live there, she spoils the mood for all of us here. What difference does it make where she lives? What is here? What is there? All the same communal apartments. The girlfriends were interested. Have you talked to your mother-in-law? Did you ask her to leave you? The daughter-in-law snorted in displeasure. Of course I told her. She's renting out this room. She says that this room allows her to deny herself almost nothing. Have you seen such impudence anywhere? The girlfriends confidently answered. No, we've never seen such rudeness anywhere else. While her own son is forced to live in three rooms with his wife and her child, she almost doesn't deny herself anything every day, instead of moving out of here and freeing us the fourth room. What kind of mother is this? The girlfriends were perplexed. What a nightmare! Are you even registered in this apartment? The daughter-in-law replied, I have the right to live here as the legal wife of her son, and my son from his first marriage can also live here. Girlfriend said, Why don't you just kick her out? The daughter-in-law said, Yes, I would have kicked her out a long time ago, but she owns half of the apartment by law. If she went to a communal apartment and signed off her share to my son, that would be fair. But she thinks only of herself. She thinks about not denying herself anything. And the fact that I, my son, and my husband have to live in three rooms on her son's small salary doesn't bother her at all. The girlfriends asked, It turns out that you have been suffering like this for almost a year? The daughter-in-law agreed, sighing. Yes, as I have married her son and moved here, I suffer so much. Before that, I suffered with my first husband in a two-room apartment, and now here. The girlfriend said, Your mother-in-law is selfish. Not only was she unable to raise her son, who would earn a lot, but she still doesn't want to give up her share in his favor. The daughter-in-law said, I won't give her a quiet life here anyway. I'll make her go to a communal apartment. The daughter-in-law began to behave impudently as soon as she was brought to this house, and every day she became more and more unceremonious towards her mother-in-law. It got to the point that she forced her mother-in-law to buy her own refrigerator and keep it in her room. Mrs. Mitchell went to the door and began to listen to what was going on in the apartment. She knew from the sounds that her daughter-in-law was still in the kitchen, she sighed heavily and decided to take everything she needed to prepare breakfast and go to the kitchen. When she entered the kitchen, she greeted her daughter-in-law and began to prepare her own breakfast without hearing a response. The daughter-in-law said, Mrs. Mitchell, don't you see that you are disturbing me? Why do you have to come to the kitchen when I'm here watching TV? I'll just have breakfast and leave, and I won't disturb you. Mrs. Mitchell, have you not yet realized that you are superfluous here? How many times have I told you to buy yourself an electric stove and cook in your room? But you seem to be doing the opposite on purpose to annoy me. And the daughter-in-law decided not to hold back her emotions anymore. She told Mrs. Mitchell in a very rude and blunt manner what she thought of her and what she wanted from her. Mrs. Mitchell said, I got it. I'm over it. You convinced me. A week later, 
A room in a communal apartment is vacant, and I will move there. Then she hurried to hide in her room. And in the evening, Mrs. Mitchell's son also learned that his mother would be leaving soon. He gladly accepted this news and didn't dissuade her. Mrs. Mitchell moved out a week later. A year passed, and suddenly the daughter-in-law remembered her mother-in-law. I wonder how my mother-in-law is doing there. Is she alive? Maybe now is the time to think about inheriting a room in a huge communal apartment in the city center. Maybe this room can already be rented out, and we don't know anything about it here. She told her husband, Let's go to your mother. He didn't understand her. Why? She's your mom. Maybe did something happen to her? At the same time, we will bring her old things that she left here. They have been sitting in the closet for a year and only take up space. And let's take a roulette. I want to measure her room. I wonder how many meters it is. Yeah, let's visit mom today. I really forgot about my mom. Darling, thank you for reminding me of this. Two hours later, they were at the door of Mrs. Mitchell's apartment. The daughter-in-law asked, looking at her husband with surprise. Does your mother definitely live here? And the door is too chic. Does she have a room in this communal apartment? The husband replied, Looks like she lives here. The bride called the apartments. A young and very beautiful woman opened the door. She asked, Hello, who do you want? The daughter-in-law asked, Hello, does Mrs. Mitchell live here? The woman replied, Here. We came to her. I am her fiancé, and this is my husband and her own son. The woman said, Come in. The daughter-in-law entered the apartment and immediately forgot about everything. She found herself in a huge and chic hallway. Most of all, she was struck by a huge aquarium with goldfish against the wall. The daughter-in-law whispered to her husband, Here's the price of one hallway, like our entire apartment. Her husband answered quietly, looking at the floor, walls, ceiling, aquarium, and all the furnishings in the hallway. Chic hallway. The hallway had seen very beautiful and expensive doors that were closed. Three wide corridors, which went somewhere far away, led from the hallway. Along one of the corridors, two huge black dogs ran out into the hallway and stood in place, and stared with interest at the daughter-in-law and her husband. The beautiful woman smiled and said, Don't be afraid, they are calm. Just don't make any sudden movements. Mrs. Mitchell is not at home right now. I think she'll be here before a month. The daughter-in-law asked, Where's her room? The beautiful woman said, I don't understand you. The daughter-in-law said, We want to surprise Mrs. Mitchell. We especially took a roulette with us to measure her room in which she lives. We also brought her personal belongings. She lives in all the rooms here. This apartment only belongs to her. So I don't really understand what you want to measure. If you're interested in the total footage, then there's about 500 square meters. The daughter-in-law asked, Who are you? The beautiful woman replied, I'm Mrs. Mitchell's personal secretary and assistant. I've been working with her for almost a year, right after she got married. She got married? The assistant said, Yes, almost a year ago. Mrs. Mitchell married some millionaire and they bought out this whole communal apartment. Then they settled everyone and made repairs here. And now they went on vacation, and they left me to look after the dogs. Therefore, you can leave her things here, and I will give them to her. The daughter-in-law said, Thank you, no need. We ourselves will hand over her things to her when we see her. Then she turned around and pulled her husband out. The daughter-in-law worried all the way home that her mother-in-law was an ungrateful woman. She told her husband, She married a millionaire and kept quiet about it. A year passed, and she never asked us about how we live and whether everything is in order with us. What kind of mother is this? Her husband agreed with her. Indeed, how is it possible? The daughter-in-law began to come up with different methods to take advantage of the mother-in-law's wealth. About a month later, they were given a notice in which they were offered to buy out part of the apartment in which the daughter-in-law and her husband now lived, and which belonged to Mrs. Mitchell. The daughter-in-law immediately called her mother-in-law. She began to shout at her mother-in-law, but we don't have money for this. Mrs. Mitchell replied calmly, I know, but I am required by law to offer my share to you. I guess that you would refuse. I remind you that I own half the apartment. The daughter-in-law asked, Why are you doing this to us? Mrs. Mitchell replied, My husband's birthday is in six months. I want to give him a worthy gift, and I decided to sell part of my apartment. Are you thinking about your son?
Mrs. Mitchell said, You think of him, you are his wife. But if you suddenly leave him, then of course I will think about him. And now I'm calm for him. My son will not be lost with you. Mrs. Mitchell has sold her two rooms to a very angry, quarrelsome, but beautiful single woman who is looking for a husband. She specifically chose such a buyer. And now this woman is watching TV in the kitchen. She has put her big refrigerator there. She also constantly scolds her neighbor for the dirty stove and the nasty smell in the kitchen from her food. And every time she tells her that she comes to the kitchen at the wrong time. And most importantly, Mrs. Mitchell's son seemed nice to the female neighbor and she began to look at him with interest. The daughter-in-law found herself in the same situation in which she drove her mother-in-law a year ago.